Hi there. How are you? This is uh, Dr. Teapot. You are the physician of tomorrow. I told you that uh, I'd be back and we will go through question week by week and go through the explanations. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? The first thing that I'd like to uh, show you is where you would find the question itself. Maybe perhaps you weren't quite sure as to where to find it. So we'll go ahead and do that first. And here on my website, www.indusintellect.com, on the very first page, you will then scroll down and you'll notice that there's a little introduction. That would be me. And, and here's the question itself. And I'll read it to you in a second. You can do this on your own time if you so desire. I gave it to you last week. And uh, immediately start talking. But obviously we have to choose a question. And so you'll go through that, and then you will then choose the answer choices. And our job to... Let's get and do that, shall we? Once again, here's the, uh, the question. If a 72-year-old male comes in with extreme fatigue, once again, in case you're not able to see the question, go to the website and then go through. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. And uh, you'll see the question. But here's a 72-year-old male comes to you in the ER with extreme fatigue. And the reason for that is because the patient had consumed tacos, right? And ended up developing gastroenteritis, ended up having diarrhea. And you, as a doctor, should know, the physician of tomorrow, that when you do have diarrhea, that it's isotonic loss. In other words, remember the audience here that I'm catering towards are those that are in the midst of medical school, about to get into your own practice and perhaps residency. And so my job is to make sure that we bridge the basic sciences and then interconnect and then integrate that with the clinical setting. And that essentially is what my focus is and has been for the past 20 years. Anyhow, moving forward, well, this individual knew that, wow, I'm losing a lot of diarrhea. I must be dehydrated, correct? So what's the patient going to do? Drink tap water. Jugs of it. Jugs of it. Hmm. Keep that in mind. And uh, when you drink a lot of tap water, you should be thinking, oh, what is that going to do to my plasma, right? My plasma compartment? Hmm. Maybe perhaps it'll dilute it. Well, I'll walk you through all that in a second. Remember, each one of these boxes and answer choices is a patient walking through your door. Think of it as such, and you'll be in fantastic shape. And... We have to then determine, depending as to the condition and what the patient has been doing, as to, well, my control would be the solid curve and the patient would be the dash curve. Well, depending as to what the behavior of the patient was, we would then have to determine as to which one of these answer choices would be the patient. Well, you should know the sodium levels should be at least 135. The patient just drank tap water. Ha, huh, of course there should be dilution taking place, right? It's like having sugar or salt in a cup of water or in a cup in general, and then more water that you pour into, it's going to get diluted. That's what 122 means to you. So next, what happens? Order is then placed in the ER by the physician. That'd be you. And then this time, the patient's not receiving 3% saline. 3% saline, that should speak volumes to you. 3% saline, what? 3% saline, normally, if it's isotonic, it's 0.9%, right? Which is approximately how much? Plasma osmolarity? 300, you can use that, and it'll be fine on your exams. But this patient's receiving a whopping 3%. So not only is the patient receiving saline, which is sodium and chloride, but is also receiving a hypertonic type, correct? Keep going. And then here, the key says, well, the question ultimately is asking, after giving the 3% saline, what does my patient look like? It's not about the diarrhea, is it? We're not looking for the patient with the diarrhea. It's not even, it's not any of these answer choices. The x-axis represents the volume. I'm going to keep it simple for you. And the y-axis then represents osmolarity. Let's go through each one of our patients. So far, we know the patient has had diarrhea and has now been given 3% saline. Hmm. And who's the patient? The patient is the dash curve. The control is the solid line. Let's take a look at what happened to the patient. Now, you should remember that over here, over here, 
over to the right is your ECF. And as part of your ECF, right about there, about a quarter of that, about one-fourth, 25% should be plasma. And that's the most important part clinically, isn't it? That's what you're paying attention to. So when the patient has been drinking water, in this case now, also been given 3% saline, you can expect, remember, what does the x-axis mean? Volume. So there, if this is the ECF compartment, and remember, I, I'm, uh, I'm going through this in a rather efficient manner because I do expect you to have your foundation down. If you don't, maybe perhaps you need to go back and read. And so now you'll notice that on the x-axis, ha, huh, the ECF volume has increased. Hmm. Is that a possibility if the patient's receiving saline? Of course it is. But what makes this answer incorrect is the fact that the patient was, re was receiving 3% saline and not the tap water. So what would you expect the osmolarity to do in this patient's plasma, which is in the ECF? Oh, it should increase. Notice, please, in our patient here, on the y-axis, it is actually decreased. The osmolarity is actually decreased. So that makes no sense. That makes no sense. And because of the ECF volume increasing, and due to the fact that the osmolarity decreased, the volume then gushed into the ICF, causing the cell to then increase. Hmm, that makes no sense in a patient that should be receiving 3% saline. Let's do this patient, or these two patients, shall we say. Both of these were answer choices. Maybe perhaps you went through it and you were thinking to yourself, what the heck, Dr. Raj? Both of these patients, or what the heck, Dr. Teapot? <laughs> One and the same. Oh, the cat's out of the bag. Anyhow, so here, these are two patients. Both of these patients look similar. Both of these were answer choices. How do I know the difference between the two? Well, I'm going to walk you through that. If you got this, then you got the answer. All right, because it is one of these patients. You'll notice here that the ECF has indeed increased in both of these patients. So we can say so far that that's a possibility. The patient did receive 3% saline. Next, when you receive 3% saline, what would you expect osmolarity to do? Hmm, increase and not decrease. Hence, that first slide was incorrect because we noticed that the ECF osmolarity had decreased. Here, you notice that it indeed increased. But Dr. Raj, both of these have increased. Yes, but the patient's not receiving volume. Here are two ways in which you could then increase the osmolarity and also increase volume in the ECF. One would be if the patient was, was taking, let's say, salt tablets. Salt tablets, all right, with sodium. If the patient was taking salt ta tablets, yes, you would have an increase in osmolarity of the ECF, and it would pull some water out of the ICF. But take a look at the increase here, okay? Versus what? I want you to take a look at the volume change in here. Mm. The volume change in, we'll call this patient A, is a lot more because the patient is not only receiving sodium chloride saline, but also re receiving the fluid. Hence, if you had a choice between A or B, if you know the patient's receiving saline, not just taking a salt tablet, then the answer here would be this patient here. And this is what's going on with our patient. The patient was, was experiencing diarrhea due to the fact that the tacos had gone bad, most likely some type of probably bacillus, right? It's, it's, especially if the tacos were, uh, if they were reheated and such, right? The diarrhea in an adult would be isotonic loss, but that was not what the question was asking. The question, and then the patient went on to drink jugs of water. The question was not asking that either. Ultimately, the question was asking you about, huh, after consuming or being administered 3% saline, then what does my patient look like? Without a doubt, it's this patient that I just showed you here. All right, let's finish this up. What about this one? Well, we could easily rule this out for a couple of reasons. Well, actually, one major reason. It's the fact that the ECF volume has decreased. You see that? You see as to how the ECF volume on the x-axis has indeed decreased. Not, o not only has that occurred, but then also you'll notice, please, that the ECF osmolarity has increased. Now, that part is correct. But the, prob the, the issue here is the fact that the ECF volume decreased. That's impossible for it to happen when you're receiving saline, correct? Now, give me a patient who is experiencing this very issue 
where there was an increase in ECFL similarity, but yet the volume was lost. Did you just go out for a workout? Did you just go out into, oh goodness, the summer heat and ran for 10 miles and you're sweating? This is your patient. If you're severely dehydrated, remember sweat is hypotonic loss. Sweat, that was not what our patient was doing. Our patient was while well, having diarrhea and then receiving 3% saline. Sweat would be an issue. A, another differential here would be diabetes insipidus, wouldn't it? In diabetes insipidus, you would lose a lot of volume. Out it comes to the PP, right? There it is. And as you continue losing tons of water in diabetes insipidus, or should I say it's hypotonic loss, not only does the ECF volume decrease, but the ECF osmolarity increases. Are you getting a hang of this? If not, that's all right. Keep going back and practice and give it clinical applications. That is the best way to do it. And that way you'll never forget. We got one more to do, and then we'll give you a little break. <laughs> Take a look at this one. This time, I'm not going to tell you anything. Pay attention to ECF first. That's where you're almost always going to begin. Almost always. What happened to the volume? Answer that question. It decreased. Who's the patient? The dash curve. That is impossible for it to happen when receiving saline. Not only that, what happened to osmolarity on the y-axis? Oh, it decreased. So not only was there a decrease in ECF volume, but there was also a decrease in osmolarity. Could this be diabetes insipidus? Impossible. Impossible. Because I just showed you diabetes insipidus where there was an increase in ECF osmolarity. So don't even go there. So what happened with this patient? Could it be sweat? I just got done telling you. Sweat. I know. You taste yourself. Dr. Raj, I taste mighty salty. Yes, you do. But you're losing more water. Fact. So therefore, ECF osmolarity increases. What happened to ECF osmolarity here in this patient? Oh, it decreased. It decreased. Hmm. So what's possibly an issue? How about if the patient had an autoimmune disease causing destruction of the adrenal cortex? Ha! Huh, what's my differential? You got it. Primary adrenal insufficiency, a.k.a. Addison. Addison. Okay? So that's our first time here. We're going to get better and better and better with this. Going live. This is rather interesting. But... If you have any questions, whatever, please get in touch on Facebook. I'm on everywhere now. And also visit the website. I'm going to put up a new case today. And we'll do the same thing next week. If you have any questions about this question, you're more than welcome to uh, get back to me. Have a wonderful day, y'all. Please be safe. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. God bless.